Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Data Automation Summit. Today, we want to talk to you about data ops for cloud native data pipelines. My name is Giorgio Adami. I am the Analytics Service Line Manager of Moviri. And with me, there is Iris today. Hi, I'm the Data Science and Cloud Manager at Metronics. Today, we want to talk to you first uh, with a, a quick introduction of who we are and uh, who are, who are uh, our uh, companies. Then we will uh, show you a use case, uh, a Metronics cloud, cloud native solution. Then we will talk about uh, some best practices that we put in action developing this uh, solution. And we will close uh, with the uh, key takeaways. First of all, who is Moviri? Moviri is a services and technology company. We focus on uh, uh, chosen, uh, strategically chosen uh, uh, IT areas like performance engineering, uh, analytics, uh, cybersecurity, and Internet of Things. Moviri was founded in the, at the beginning of the millennium uh, by the Politecnico di Milano as a spin-off of the Politecnico di Milano, which is the main uh, technical uh, university in Italy. And uh, we are now almost 300 uh, experts, and we have a global footprint. In fact, uh, we have uh, uh, different offices, uh, a couple of them in the United States, one in Los Angeles and another one in Boston, who covers the west and the east uh, coast of the United States. Then there is the, the main office, the headquarters in Milan, and we have uh, also other offices in the other continents to cover more than uh, 300 customers in, uh, in, different, uh, uh, in different countries. I am the service line manager of the analytics team. Uh, as a, as a, the service line manager, we foster goals of, the, of our uh, customers, helping them reaching their, uh, their goals. Um, we, we provide uh, rock solid skills in uh, data engineering, uh, data science, uh, and machine learning operations. Data engineering is always foundational in, in, our, uh, in the projects that we are involved with. And uh, in this field, we offer advanced and modern solution to manage the enterprise life data life cycle. Uh, modern solutions like Ascend, in we, for which we are a premier partner. Uh, we always uh, offer uh, the design of big data solutions, uh, uh, always in a data ops approach uh, to minimize the cost of uh, operational and maintenance uh, activities. Here is the stage is yours. Thank you, Giorgio. A um, few words about Metronics. Uh, we are in the field of robotic pool cleaners since 1983. It's a long time. You can see one of our robots in the picture on the right side. Uh, quite nice. Uh, our, our HQ is a place in Israel. We have five subsidiaries, one in the USA, which is the biggest, uh, one in France, Spain, Germany, and Australia. We have three production lines in Israel. Two of them uh, are in Israel, in the northern of Israel. We have one in France. We are more than 1,400 employees uh, worldwide. Our products um, are mainly robotics, as I said before, um, which one of you is, who is familiar with the uh, Grand Dolphins, they are all uh, named the same. We, are in, we have some smart pool solutions like uh, smart covers, uh, drowning alerts, and uh, others. And we have uh, water technologies. Why do we need water technologies? We'll see uh, in the next slides. Uh, also, we are dis distributed in uh, 65 countries. We have uh, 100 distributors. And all in all, we have 50% global market share. So um, what is the challenge here? And why do we need water sensing technology? Well, this guy here in the picture looks at his pool and he's not happy at all. The pool is totally green, full of algae. I don't recommend to jump in and take a swim. What exactly does uh, this guy need? What does he want? So he wants very simple things. He wants the, his pool to be clean at all time, and he wants it to be chemical balanced so he can uh, be relaxed and enjoy his lovely pool. Those of you who own a swimming pool will agree that this sounds simple, but it can be quite a headache 
to achieve a clean and healthy pool at all time and also in an efficient way. So what is the solution um, that we wish to, um, to do? So it all starts with the pool. Here you can see a very nice and blue pool and our challenge is to keep it in that way. Our hardware is located in the pool, collecting data from, uh, from the water and uploading it to the cloud, which is consolidating also some other external data, such as weather and pool parameters and location, um, all, uh, all consolidated together within the, in the cloud. What do we do with all this data? Can you take it one slide before? Thank you. What do we do with all this data? So we need to reflect the owner, our customer in this case, um, his pool status, whether it's uh, healthy and balanced and uh, safe to swim. It is uh, very essential for us that if something goes wrong, then we should balance the pool again and uh, make everything uh, uh, in good shape. So as you can see here, our main component is our cloud computing entity based on a cloud native solution and handled in a very modern data stack. So let's take a look. Um, we'll demonstrate here the data stack that we are using. Um, let's take a look on our research uh, pipelines. The main component here is our Ascent platform, orchestrating and processing the end-to-end -end data flow. As input, we have several data sources. We have uh, data stored in public clouds, needs to be ingested to the platform. Also, there is structured data from our consolidated database that I mentioned before. And we have some stream data, and of course, the files stored in S3. As part of the process, uh, we have several machine learning models that we use for test data. Results are populated in several streams outside the platform. First, back to the database, enriching our data and use that is used for analytics and dashboarding for our research users. Second is the streaming out for online purposes. And the last one is the IoT, which is handling the hardware activities. All is maintained in AWS platform, of course. And uh, why, so why did we need uh, a data platform and why did we choose Ascend? First is about scale. We were at the point that we needed to scale in few aspects in terms of uh, streaming data, volumes, and number of developers working on the same data together. We needed to have a platform which can handle all ops procedures. Next is about um, automation. We wanted to run in a continuous mode and didn't want to have any manual activities, although it's for research purposes. To be more efficient, everything needs to be automated. Having so many components running, we need also to have a very good monitoring and to understand if everything works okay and alerts on time when something goes wrong so we can fix it in minimum time loss. And the third thing is about complexity. When we start in small and simple implementation, and as we continue, things get more complicated and uh, we need to run things in more efficient and scalable way. And as we are developing in an agile mode, there are many changes need to be done along the way and very quickly. So I can tell you that it's not, it's not um, uh, very easy to make changes when you have a notebook uh, made of thousands of lines of code. So a direct access to uh, stage data can help on that. Also to meet the business needs, we get, and uh, to get the, uh, the things done very quickly, we need to focus on, on what we need to achieve rather than how to do it. It makes things easier for the implementation for developers to do that in that way. And why did we choose Movini? Well, we started working together at the beginning of the Ascend implementation 
And they were supporting us on our early stages uh, when we ran the platform. But then we got to the point where we wanted to expand our team abilities and to accelerate our solution. They were, there were no question that, that they could help us. And knowing that they have the right experts, uh, understanding the platform and have experience in variety, variety of uh, tools and uh, technologies. Later on, having challenges on architecture and machine learning, um, we needed their expertise on data and the software engineering to face our challenges. In all those months that we were working together, we, they have been very flexible <laughs> on meeting our needs in terms of experts and, uh, and the effort needed that was con constantly changing as we all know that uh, this is our real life. Thank you very much, Iris, for the nice uh, words. Uh, what we, I, I will start from that. Uh, you told you, you just told that one of your need was to uh, enable your team, your heterogeneous team, to to work uh, on the same platform on uh, a lot of uh, streams, data streams. So, why Ascend and how Ascend enables collaboration uh, on of uh, heterogeneous teams? First of all, it is a, a Git-centric tool and can be easily integrated in uh, any pre-existing workflow. So if you already have uh, uh, in, in place a workflow with uh, something else, you can uh, keep it, keep the way you, you develop your code and integrate it with uh, uh, your, uh, your, um, your workflow. It enables CI, CD and automation, and it is very important for that. And uh, it uses a declara declarative approach to develop pipelines. Uh, it has also a data ware atomic transformation uh, methodology that helps you to, you know, bind together the data you are processing with the code that you are uh, you are developing. And uh, it, it is a cloud native uh, software as a service platform uh, that offers also low code features because uh, you can uh, you can write uh, for sure in the Scala or PySpark if you are able to, but if, you, if some of your teams are not so familiar with uh, those uh, uh, codes, uh, you, they, they can still use the old uh, but gold uh, SQL. Now, what we want to, to share with you today are some of the most best practices that we put in action uh, with the Matronics experience to take the most, uh, the best uh, of the, the technology. Uh, the first one is the environment segregation, because uh, uh, if you are going to develop something for sure, you know that you need to, uh, you know, differentiate the environments, uh, at least for developing, staging and production, which is uh, uh, what we rec strongly recommend, at least three different environments. And uh, we will share with you later why. Uh, the best choice is always to, you know, have three different setup of the of the platform. But if you do not want, because maybe uh, you you cannot, uh, uh, you know, um, you want to start small, it is still uh, possible to segregate those environment using data services. Uh, why? Because data services uh, are different, uh, you know, uh, like environment in the same setup uh, that enables you to move code from one data service to another one, keeping the code the same, but using uh, like environment variables to, you know, switch the pointers from reading or writing connection, uh, connector from, uh, you know, uh, test or development uh, uh, sources to production one. The only thing that you have to pay attention in that is that uh, under the hood, the environment, the, the, the resource are the same, the resources. So uh, keep that in mind. The second, uh, the second best practice is to adopt the proper naming convention because everyone, uh, every one of your team is working in the same environment uh, and uh, needs to, you know, uh, give the proper name on what they are doing. Uh, in, in this way, it's you know straightforward to understand uh, uh, which code is uh, is done to do what. Uh, what we decide to implement uh, is to put first of all the name of the data engineer that is working. Uh, second, the name of the data flow uh, that that is uh, the the object of, of the you know the development. 
And uh, last but not the least, the name of the feature that is going that, that the developer is going to develop or to uh, add to an existing data flow. Third is to adopt the code repository. This is a, for sure a straightforward, but is still uh, worth to, to be announced. Uh, you need to take advantage of the a data repository uh, tool. Uh, what we use uh, in Medtronic is a bit bucket, but there are plenty of them. Um, you, can, uh, you can integrate your code and your platform, first of all, using your IDE. Uh, tool, so your laptop and synchronizing the pushing and moving your code from the platform to the repository tool and, and vice versa. But what we recommend is also to develop uh, automatically script uh, that uh, can automatically deploy your code from uh, at least in production. So from directly from the code repository tool to the production uh, data service. Putting all together, uh, for sure, you need also to adopt a workflow if you do not have it already. Uh, what we recommend is to adopt this uh, Git flow simplified version, uh, which, uh, you know, first of all, what, what we need to say is that with Ascend, you can develop code in two main uh, ways. The first one is UI first, and the other is code first. Even if you're developing in UI, in, uh, you can develop in UI first. So everything from the UI, and for sure it is possible, and you can take full advantage of the you know, no code features uh, I was talking uh, about before. But even if you want to adopt uh, uh, you know, the code first approach, the best thing is that you, you use the UI at the initial phase to design uh, the, you know, the, the steps and the, the blocks that uh, that uh, form your, your data flow, your pipeline. And then you can, using the SDK, you can download your code, you have the structure, and you can put inside that um, the code that you want. In this case, you can develop step by step, block by block your pipeline. You can then uh, build and test your code. Uh, we will show you uh, in, in a moment a couple of examples of how to test your code uh, incrementally and also everything together. Then for sure you can, uh, you can move to the review phase in which uh, you know, the, your, the team leader is able to review your code to, um, and then to pass it to the merge and promote phase in which the, the code developed by every member of the team is put together. And, uh, and then the last but not least, there is the deploy phase that we uh, already said we recommend to you know, automatically deploy your code to the platform to ascend and then go back to develop again. Let me share with you a couple of examples in which uh, you can take advantage uh, of the ascend SDK, first of all, but you know, best practice to test your code in this case. First of all, you can use the, the dev environment, your, the development environment, uh, in which you will have uh, uh, usually uh, fake data um, to, to, or you know, uh, sample data to, to test your code and to develop it. Uh, you can develop the entire pipeline, but then you, you need to test it. And what we suggest is to, to test uh, block by block. And also you can test it locally if you prefer. In this case, it's you know, quicker to test the, the, the blocks that you want because, because taking full advantage of the SDK, you are also able to you know, uh, retrieve immediately the data that uh, are in input of this code in the, in the entire pipeline and retrieving it immediately from Ascend. In this case, it's easier because if you want to, to test you know, the last part of a, of a pipeline, you do not need to run the entire pipeline every time. You, just, you, you can test uh, just uh, the, the last part and uh, incre incrementally uh, test and uh, review and enhance your code. Uh, in this case, you have uh, a quick feedback. You can also test, and we suggest to do it, uh, corner cases. You know, um, in your code uh, uh, can be subject to you know maybe unwanted behaviors with uh, some corner cases. You, when you develop it, you are aware of them, and you can also stress your code uh, to be very robust. Uh, uh, testing corner cases with uh, uh, synthetic or fake uh, input. Uh, for sure, this is always uh, what we understood is that it's always uh, very useful to test your code uh, with uh, empty values or empty inputs. 
and, uh, and check if the, the behavior is what you expect. Last but not least, uh, using a SDK, uh, you can also test your code block by block, uh, um, especially when your code needs to interact uh, with external resources like APIs or databases. So what we want to share with you now is that make use of the SDK of Ascend because uh, they are very, very useful. Then uh, you can promote your code to the stage environment. A stage environment that usually can be left empty as a data service uh, that we said before. But when you need to promote in production a code before putting it in production, you can test it in stage environment deploying the entire data flow and testing the entire, so the entire data pipeline. In this case, there is no, no more need to test it block by block. You can test uh, the entire pipeline with, uh, you know, actually uh, with uh, also production data sources if needed. Uh, what we suggest is to create uh, uh, stage uh, data sources that are a copy of production and stages uh, uh, destinations but if you are not able, you can uh, still uh, read directly from production data and uh, disable automatically or scripting the, the you know, the, you, you can put in post the right connectors to avoid, uh, you know, uh, writing data on production databases. So in this case, you are still able to, to test your code uh, in like production environment, but still is not production. So as a key takeaway, what we want to share with you are some words. The first one is a scale. So what we understood is that when you develop code, uh, you always have to think uh, as if you are at scale because uh, um, you know it's always a trade-off to be to with with the speed. But uh, it's better if you always think that your code might run on uh, uh, larger data sets uh, in uh, in a, in a, in the future in the near future. The second word is implementation. And uh, as I said before, uh, we strongly suggest to take full advantage, advantage of Ascend's SDK. They are very, very useful. Next is uh, Agile. Even though, as Giorgio said, we need to think about scale, it is crucial to start in simple and very lean implementation to take uh, the time to understand the, uh, the environment and the platform and uh, then expand it step by step, introducing the production in phases. As I see it, it's uh, a key factor for success implementation. Next is about efficiency. Uh, it is very helpful for an efficient implementation to understand what goes under the hood of the platform and uh, how it runs your code behind the scenes. And there are many ways to make things work, but uh, you have to choose the way that the right one that uses best the platform uh, abilities, as uh, Giorgio said also about this using the SDK. And next is about partnership. Choosing the platform is not enough because uh, as in real life, not always everything goes as you want. And the key is to know that you have someone and somewhere that can help you and support you with your challenges when you need it most. And last but not least, there is acceleration. So call Moviri for support. And thank you. Thank you. See you in a moment for the Q&A session.